Okay, in five, four, three, two, two. So the Claw Luthic is there at the door. Cool. She's surrounded by like some other female orcs. There's the big Etten. She's communicated with your orcs to get an idea of what the hell's going on, but she doesn't quite know why y'all are here. Um, she just said that they had just gotten into this, uh, just broken this in. facility the last evening. I go up to the, uh, the female at, what's her name, Luthic? No. She's just the Claw of Luthic. She's only known by her title. She doesn't have a she's name not, anymore. Yeah, she's not the leader. If no, Puyet became the, the Claw of Luthic, Puyet's name would be Claw of Luthic, because then she would just be her, her official role. Mm. Claw Luthic is probably leader, but she's not the Etten, I don't believe. Hartman's no. Saying. But yes, the Claw Luthic is the one in charge of this group of orcs. I heard Hartman had a dream of this place and seems to have constant nightmares. Any night I'm up yes. after him, I see him rolling and sweating in his sleep. I've been dreaming of this place. I actually dreamt of some of the things you people have been up to here, and I'm curious. I'm wondering what kind of tie I have to this place and why I keep dreaming of it. <clears throat> I can't tell you. Mm. It was Maybe. between you and the gods if you've been drawn here. You think so? What do you mean you've been uh, having visions of what we've been doing? We've just been trying to get in here and these two dwarves wouldn't let us in. Dragon Queen of Ice Fire Peak. It is now the morning of day seven. You're in town. If you're going to be waiting for Sork to get finished doing his translations at the inn, you're going to have to wait until tomorrow morning at the earliest field ahead off to the Dwarven excavation. So you have a day to kill. How would y'all like to deal with that? Resupply. Um, I want to say that let's talk to Halia real quick because I've been having a plan to rebuild Coneyberry to Orkenberry create a holy city is there any place I can sell my crossbow at? not really anymore alright and I feel like Halia with her minor skill connection might be a good investor to help bring that along especially if I'm trying to do a high harvest tide feast and uh Bring in yeah, you've concocted a plan, an idea of how to deal with Cryovane's crisis, of how to get Cryovane's castle off this world into the Frostfell. That won't require having to seek out 21 high-level archmages who might all have varying, very hard quests they'd want you to do or may not be trustworthy. So would you like to tell the audience about the plan you have in mind? Planning to get a single high enough level mage who can cast gate while having his apprentice mages all casting reduce at the same time on the castle, making it to where it reduces to the size of either the gate or smaller, and that way it can easily be brought through the gate. Obviously it won't work with all the gold inside, but if we can transfer all that into the Githyanki warships we'd be able to move that along a lot faster, possibly get it done simply a couple months instead of possibly years. That sounds like a lot of talking. 
I'm gonna go get drunk, you handle all that. Okay. Okay. You're gonna go start off your day going to the end to get drunk. Mm -hmm. uh, Arvin is a drunk. Okay. So you're gonna go to Halia first thing in the morning? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meet me at the end tomorrow morning, same time. Yeah, just stay at the end. I okay. guess if you're buying a night or whatever. Is there a contraception? No. Damn. Why do you magical means, but you don't know of any. I feel like that's a stupid idea, Hartman. Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of need your help persuading these people that the orcs would be okay. You think so? Yes, because okay. I also need the orcs to help me do something. And that way, like... Well, if you need me, I'll be with you. Alright, I feel like you should always be around for this important work, instead of just getting drunk. That's my, that's, that's my thing. <laughs> that's why you... Well, buy beer for the road. Alright, actually that's a good idea. Hmm. Alright, well you can find Halia at the Miner's Exchange right. by the time they open around roughly what feels like 9 in the morning. Hey, right. here's, here's, a, here's some silver. I give him, like, my 5 silver. Fill up the tequila bottle. It's something hard. You know what I mean? Okay, we'll do that whenever we go around. Sick. Um, That's you now, buddy. Let's see. So go to the miners' exchange. I want to talk to Halia. And I uh, have this great idea that would really help with uh, the dragon on Ice Barry Peak, Cryovane. What's this idea you have in mind? So the Cunnyberry Ruins, we do something similar to what just happened in Vandalin and is currently happening in Neverwinter. We start rebuilding it, making it a holy city, a city of peace. And uh, in that point, it would also have a lot of room to build, especially something for a central bank or just a knowledge and miners hub, because it is awfully close to a lot of mines and whatnot on the Sword Mountains. Hmm. Okay, this is a... Uh bold initiative you're proposing to say the least up and just rebuild a crushed town from scratch and you're saying you you what you want the miners guild to uh, like help back your initial investment here yes just for a small party while we start looking for true investors to help with the building what 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 kind of party what do you mean here uh, a high harvest tide festival we were planning to get the orcs of the region to start collecting some meat, and we were going to go around sending harpers to the Summer Queen, the um, last year at Fort Hob, and a few other people, uh, along with uh, Garrig, a man we knew from Helmshold. Helmshold, thank you. You've been, you've been using your normal voice for so long as Reed's voice that I kind of think, like, Reed does sound like you. Oh, yeah. Reed's a shy, introverted person that has to go out and talk to stuff. That's great. I, I'm actually imagining it as you, as you speak. And that way, after we actually get a lot of the foundation, and we were also planning to talk to the dwarves of Gontelgrim and possibly get the backing of them, knowing that it might interest them to have a nice little hub there as well. Well, I mean, this is an awful lot of, like, big what-ifs. Um, are you sure you just would want to do the festival in Fandolin? We already have infrastructure here. I mean... We could just have the party at the manor hall that we've slowly become nicknaming Heroes Hall. Oh yeah, I heard some of the folks around town been calling it that because y'all been sleeping up there. It's it's cute, but and fix it up just a little bit more, make a nice uh, dining spot, clean it up, and after it's just good enough to have enough people to sit in, we can talk normally. I feel like. We might actually be able to get something great to work here. And that way there would be a lot more infrastructure coming in and out. And there would be a lot more gold running through your pockets. So Hartman is, is here with Puyat. Yes. Oh, I mean, the, well, the benefits of holding a festival are, you know, like the, 
that that's always going to have an economic boost to your area. And, um, inviting a lot of very powerful people, especially just to come see this little town of Fandolin and see what Coney Berry could become, if not even greater. Hmm. Well, you, you need to guess decide. So you're gonna you want to do this in Coneyberry, and not here in town. That's you're gonna have to hire a bunch of workers. Oh, I guess you can probably go through Elmar for a lot of the supply issues in terms of labor and just basic stuff. But I mean, you're gonna need to clear off areas up in up in the ruins well, so we that do people have can some even have a party or gonna... up there that are really good at manual labor of just at least moving a large quantity of rubble you'll still need carpenters cooks a, a whole slew of, of, of regular people to actually throw off a festival i mean that's like no small thing to organize or pay for um maybe if you went to go speak to elmar and got him to like mock up a proposal and and then shoot me some uh like estimates of like what the cost is before i uh i'm willing to put anything down i'm y'all have done a couple of good services for the city though so for, for town so far so i'm willing to to entertain this idea all right well uh, i'm not sure exactly how this is supposed to help you with your dragon issue but well if we can show the dragon that there is a peaceful thing and that if enough uh high enough powered individuals of wizard kind might be able, even able to get the dragon out of here a lot sooner than a couple years it might just take a couple months hmm. Hmm. and that way i don't have to scavenge all of the world just to find them i can have them just come to me okay well why do you if you need high you need wizards I need wizards and uh at least a good handful of apprentices mm. roughly well most of your major cities will have archmages of some sort luskin has some waterdeep has some amphail uh, which is in the south of the deseran valley has some yartar has its own art you archmage N neverwinter doesn't but a lot of people suspect never ember himself is a spellcaster of some sort so i guess it kind of does but then you had to have him sticking his nose in all your business. Yeah. Uh, there's Long Saddle, the Harpels. Uh, you might have heard of them, probably. Um, yes, the. Uh... They're real introverted and mostly are into magical experimentation. Uh, you want something guaranteed? Uh, you could go as far as Silvery Moon. Think the Elves would be any help? Yeah, they they might take interest in it, but that's that's a good little trip for you. Yartar, they're their archmage. You can probably like if you can promise them enough money or wealth. I'd say the same thing for whatever the archmage in Waterdeep. They're probably going to have a high price. Mm -hmm. uh, Luskin, they have some mages up there. Who knows? I don't know. That that would be risky to bring them in. Possibly, you can go down as far as Baldur's Gate. Candlekeep probably has at least one or two archmages there at any given day. Uh, it just depends on what you need them to do. I need them to cast a gate to Frostfell. And then from then, I need them to shrink castle. Enormous ice castle. Ar Armin's discussed all these plans, yes. so he's a better... Yes, yeah, so oh, I was so discussing. I was discussing them with you earlier. All right, cool. And that way, we can just shrink the castle and easily move it. And after that, the dragon will simply just go to Frostfell, where the castle is. Now, I'd heard that you had talked to the dragon and made some sort of bargain. So that's what she wants, huh? She wants to get out of here with 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 a castle. Well, that's novel. And she just loves the <sighs> ice stone the beauty of it. So what you really want the party for is to attract some high-profile people to actually come down here so you don't have to waste your time wandering all half the damn countryside trying to talk one archmage and his apprentices to come help you out, huh? Exactly. Well, you know, if you're going to be sending letters off, whether, you're not, whether you choose to hold it here in Fandolin, it'd be a lot cheaper. Like I said, we already have a lot of infrastructure here. But if you want to do the Coneyberry thing, 
I mean, there are advantages. I'd, I'd have to consult with some of my higher ups in, in the guild, and that's going to take time because it's not like we have telephones on this planet. So, um, yeah, I would start talk to Elmar, like get him to give you estimates for both costs for what it would cost to throw a, a high harvest type festival here in town and what it would cost to do in Coneyberry. And I'll see what I can match in on that to get it started, but you're probably going to have to go get some of these other temples and other religious organizations or, or lords yes. around here. You're saying you're going to go to Gonto Grimm and a couple other spots that would all kind of go together with check that. Check with Circle of Swords, Emerald Enclave, and try to get a lot of Druidic backing on it. If it's affordable and I can get my uh, higher-ups to sign off on it, I'll tentatively agree, but nothing in writing yet, so... Well, I'll go talk to... Uh... Elmar then real quick, and I'll come right back and let you know. Okay, well, have a good day. Adios, amigo. Pop out of the door, walk all the way up to uh, Barthen's Provisions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is the door open? Or yeah, they're open by now. Right. Sick. Walk on in. Hey, Omar. Good to see you again. Hey, Omar. Oh. We have a... Back house. again already? You just had such a huge order. The, the, the construction workers, did they show up this morning to start work on the... Uh, uh, we didn't have time to check to see if they were here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'll take a look later. I, I got a crew of six coming up there to start patching up your house like you paid for. Nice. So, nice. they start to get the basic work done on it. It'll be a couple of days before the lumber comes in. Thanks for the card pool. That was quite, quite nifty. Yeah, that was a little hard to lean on me. And, uh, we have actually a great business offer for you. Shit. Oh, I'm always down for good business offers. What do you have in mind? You looking to buy something big? Uh... Yeah, we're actually looking for a lot of goods and services. We're trying to host a high harvest type festival up in Coneyberry. If you need right, sure. Coneyberry? That was destroyed like 80 years ago by barbarians, was it? How are you going to hold a festival there? Because we're going to be rebuilding it into a new holy city. Hmm. And we currently would have, uh, depending on your estimates, of how much you think it cost for roughly 50 plus people for a single night of harvest. Okay, well, um, hmm, you need food, you're gonna need some work crews yeah, we to also set something up, get some carpenters. Uh, you're gonna need, like, you're gonna go on entertain us to hire some entertainers, dancing girls, minstrels, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you want a proper druidic... Like, who's paying for this? Like, how much, like... Um, well, depending on how it looks and how much it is, we will most likely be having the uh, Miners Exchange back us up with their loans, along with also... It's a good way of getting the dragon to leave Ice Spire Peak even faster. Yeah, I'm all for that. Well, um, I can start, like, working some numbers and figure out, like, a cost estimate. If you say Haley is going to, uh, potentially be backing this, uh, hmm. I don't know, I'm gonna need a couple days. Alright, well, we're about um, to be going out of town tomorrow. If you could but... give me, like, any kind of, like, uh, overall sketch of, like, the layout of Coneyberry, I've never personally been up there, and, uh, uh, yeah, I can give you a quick doodle. Okay. Roughly like that. Okay. Uh, all right. Like I said, I'll start like figuring out what kind of supplies and personnel would be and needed for something of this size. Size is roughly up to a half mile from the farthest little 
spot I could see. Okay. Hmm. Well, I mean, we're not like rebuilding a town. We just need a festival area cleared. And we're gonna need like some tents, pavilions, a place for people to park their horses and wagons. Because if you're gonna be having travelers come in, uh, we're gonna need cooking pits, dining tables. Uh, it's gonna be. It's gonna be yeah, just bringing a bunch of people in to, to employ, and then having to house them. With tents, we're looking at, this is going to be th up into the thousands at the bare minimum. I'm gonna, it's going to take me a couple days to work out the uh, specifics. Uh, so, I guess, yeah, just come back by or I'll send a message to y'all. All right. Well, up at the manor house. We'll be out of town soon, but I think Hartman does need to buy something from you. Oh. Um, what did you need? What was it again? Mead. Mead? Oh, yes. Ale. Um, oh, traveling tanker and some ale. You know, we want to buy bulk. If you're buying like liquor from him, and you're you're like buying like large. And you do have orcs, so. Mmm. Oh, party all night. Okay. What the? How much do you think we can keep in the wagon? Drinks by the barrel. Probably a barrel or two. Yeah. There's what they have on their shelves in the store. Drinks by the barrel down there. Small beer, Applejack, beer, common, beer, quality, ale, cider, common, ale, cider, quality, ale, cider, exceptional, wine, common, wine, quality, wine, exceptional, mead, common, I asked quality. the orcs, what kind of, uh, what, what do you, what oh, do you guys think? Got spirits up here. Ooh. What, what are you guys relatively interested in? They don't in? give a shit. No? Okay. Okay, well. Buy spirits. Spirits? You want a spirit? We got rot gut. By the barrel. <laughs> yeah, get a like, barrel of rock cut. Two barrels of rock cut, please. Mm -hmm. 24 gold. Yes, 24 gold. All right. Write that down. It's your gold. All right. And so, we'll have that wheeled out in the uh, cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. right in the port. Porters carry it for you. Nice. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, the orcs carry And I'll take it. it up to the manor house. The orcs will take your. your Grog up to the manor. Okay, so you also wanted to look out for Galandro and uh, yes. Donabella and give them some oh, tasks. Oh, um, I really want to quick to see, see if I can find a Talon at the end so I can catch him before he runs yeah, off. He already took off. He already took you off. You should have looked at him first thing off. He's already out of town. Damn it. Alright, well, um, I want to talk to... Galandro and Donabella real quick. Okay, Galandro you can find at the end. Yes. Strumming a little tune. Alright, um, I want to ask him if he can send some letters to the Summer Queen, the Knights, or not Knights, the, uh, the Lasher at Fort Hob, Garrig at the Helm's Hold, and send a letter to mages. I'm not a post officer. Even if I do work for the hoppers, you can just write your own letters and hire couriers to do that. But I need it for a very important task only I can trust you with. Oh, well, what's going on? So we're going to be rebuilding Coneyberry to help save this dragon. It's early in the morning. That math doesn't add up to me. You're going to rebuild Coneyberry to save a dragon? Don't... Creating a new holy city would make an influx of mages and a lot of high power people coming and giving us a lot of resources and capability to move the dragon's lair out of this dimension. Oh, so that's what your deal with the dragon was, huh? Hmm. It's all the hot talk around town. I can like, maybe straighten out a few rumors. Some guy was going around telling everyone that you'd play chess with it or something like that. Uh, anyway, um... Okay. And for that, I need you to send out those letters. You want me to write them for you? Uh, just make them simplistic and elegant and ask them to come to Coneyberry Ruins for the High Harvest Tide Festival for a discussion of the Coneyberry Ruins. Okay. And to sign off on an Ice Spire Pact. And on behalf, on, on an on, Ice Spire Pact. What's on behalf, that? on the pact to not harm or... Um, let the dragon be in peace up until we move it from this dimension. Oh, okay. And like a, that, kind of like a non-aggression treaty with exactly. the dragon and everyone living around here. That's okay. I can get behind that. Um, I can also just, like send word out on that kind of stuff. Oh, like 
Uh, you just want these four people to show up to your festival? Like, how are you um, going to get people to show up to your festival? I need these letters sent out to these four people, but I would like to use the Harpers to just spread this lore all the way to Silvery Moon, down to the um, Star Mountains, all the way to the Mirror of Dead Men, and all the way up to Blackford Crossing. Okay. Okay, I can spread the word on that a lot easier. Uh, it'll take me a day, I guess, to like write up some nice sounding letters. So. Oh man, it's gonna be a bitch writing something flowery enough to get the Summer Queen to leave her lodge, from all I hear. But, uh, sure. Alright. Huh? Thank you. Uh, how much gold would this cost? Um, well, I mean, like, this this is a personal favor. You're asking for the help from the Harpers. We'd be more than glad to help. Y'all have been doing some tremendously good work for the people here of this town. And so I, it's just my own little way of supporting. Um, I'm probably going to fish out uh, the actual delivery to hired couriers. I, I know some that I can trust, and I know we'll get, we'll get the delivered and whatnot. Thank you. Uh, so, like... Uh, like, give me like five gold to cover costs, and that'll five be fine. Gold. Need five gold? I got it. Okay, sure. All right. All right. So, deduct, deduct five gold. Galandro will write the letters to the. You said the Summer Queen and Lasher, and who the else? The Summer Queen, Lasher, uh, Garrig, and. Uh... Did you want to have a letter sent to the Harpels at Long Saddle? Yes, the Harpels, that was their name. Okay. At the... What's the name of their manor? Ivy Mansion. Ivy, Ivy Mansion. Manor or something like that. Yes. Okay. Alright. Like, you know, that's... Like, are you sure? Like, there's more... Are you planning on talking to some of the other people around here? Because that's kind of an odd, small group of people to write letters to. I'm going to be talking to a couple more around here, but I prefer to do those in person. Okay. Alright. Well, I'll get started on it, and hopefully I can get these sent out by tomorrow. Alright, thank you so much, Galandrio. Alright, thank you. Alright, now I need to talk to Donabella. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. she's staying at the inn. Uh, so while She's checking. not at the bar, but she's like up in her room reading, so if you uh, go up to her room um, and knock... I want to quickly check on Sork real quick. Okay. Uh, go over Sork's room, knock on his door. Like Ruby's hanging outside the door, sitting on a chair, like cleaning her, uh, her hammer or some shit. I right. go, hey boss. Hey, Sork in there? Oh yeah, yeah, right. he's been in there all night. I've been keeping an eye on him. Alright, uh, knock on the door and open it up. What the hell do you want? Alright, <laughs> want to check in. Thanks for all your hard work, man. Uh, how far are you getting? Uh, I'm not doing as you asked. I'm trying to translate these damn notes for you. That's fucking great. Alright, well, good job, man. Hey, Zork, you want some ale? I got, I got a barrel or two. I'm fine. I don't have time to drink right now. I'm trying to get this shit finished. All right, well, if you need somebody, let me know. Let's want this over with so I can get the hell out of this hotel. <laughs> all right. And, uh, all right. Go out, close the door, check on, uh, Donabella. Okay. And I'm going to ask her to pick up a couple books for me and go back to Neverwinter. What did, what books do you, you need? Uh, I mean, um, do you have specific books, or are you just yes, looking for need, certain subjects? I need certain subjects. Uh, Moonshade, Isle Cults, and uh, Religions. Okay. The Shadowfell slash Raven Queen, anything you find out about that. And... Don't need Planar Travel. So yeah, just those two books. Okay, well, uh, I'll need 50 gold to get the, the, co the cost of having copies made. Uh -huh. Are you going to want me to bring them back down after they're done? Um... Or are you planning on coming yeah. up the Neverwinter to pick them up? Keep them in Neverwinter. I'll be there eventually to pick them up in the next week or so. Alright. If anything changes, just send me word and I can always have them sent back down to you if you're not going to be able to make it. Of course. All right. And that's 50 gold. And so you're only asking for the books on the Moonshea Isles and on uh, Shadowfell slash Raven Queen. Okay. Yeah. And that's so you can see if there might be any references to the Nagpa. Exactly. All right. And... Yeah, I believe that's it. All right. Well, that's about midday. Y'all are just going to spend the rest of the day just relaxing in town. Oh, wait. Being friendly with people. I need to be by my um, halfling pipe weed real quick. 
Okay. Right. So go back up. To <laughs> I need Barthens. to be by it. <laughs> For no particular reason why. Uh, go to Barthens Provisions real quick one more time. Knock mm. on the door. No, it's a store you just walk yeah. into. Oh, knock on the door, open up. I'm like, hey, Barthen, I'm back once again. I told you, it's going to be a couple days before I have an estimate on your party, man. I know, I know, I know. I just forgot to buy something last time. By any chance, do you have any halfling pipe weed? Oh. Oh. Uh, well, actually, yeah. I got a special room where I keep that kind of stuff in the back so that the younglings don't accidentally <laughs> see it. Uh, uh, so he leads you into like a little like bodega room where he's got like jars of various like hookahs uh, and stuff uh, of, of, of halfling weeds. Mm -hmm. So halfling hookah. I'll pick up this uh, Bilbo smell. The really good. long pipe. It's the good stuff. Okay, I'll buy a buy a pound of that. Two gold pieces. <laughs> Jeez. That's how much it is. Uh, one pound for two gold pieces. That's, That's all the game great. Made. It's not illegal, so there's no mass. There has never been the massive hike in pricing because of all that. Uh, and so, boom. That's okay. Make money though. Gotta yes. make this stuff illegal. Make some profit. Imprison some people. Get them to do your work for you. Well, yeah. when you're <laughs> sheriff of Coneyberry, you can make drugs illegal so that they can make more money selling weed. Undercover. You'll be dead. With your corrupt cop bullshit. All right. Um. So yeah, okay. I got that, and so I load my druidic focus, and over the manor house. That's assuming it. that you wander back to the manor house, where you yeah. go, like, um, like the the construction crew, the guys that Elmar hire. That's two humans, two dwarves, and two halflings. They're at, they're starting off mainly just by like kind of taking measurements and doing some basic shit, clearing out the holes, making the areas they have to patch more evened out, seeing yeah. what they're going to have to yank. Uh, they're keeping their distance from the two orcs who just kind of been sitting around out front. They opened up one of the two barrels that you bought and are just sitting there drinking your, uh, rot gut. Alright, um, well, the other one they set on the inside of the door of the main hall into the building. Um, um so you just gotta, like I said, like anything else you want to declare that you're doing or you just gotta just like slow fade on the rest of the day? Slow fade for the rest of the day. Hartman, did you have anything you else you wanted to do? Pretty set. Pretty uh, set on everything. All right. Anything for anyone? Nope. Not that I know of. Okay. Okay. So there goes day seven. Whilst having a real heavy sleep after your third night of having raucous orc sex with your new wife. Hartman has another dream, where he's back in the temple again, but now sunlight is streaming in and everything's quiet. The doors are smashed open on the floor, and you hear just that, that weird laughter again behind you. But every time you turn around to, to see it, you don't. You, this time you don't see the apparition of the dwarf priest. All just right. empty halls everywhere, and then you wake up and it's morning. Oh. It'll be roughly about 11-ish, noonish by the time Sorks put the final touches on his book and y'all can go anywhere. Okay, so what were you saying? Um, the first one was lucid. Are oh, you going to say anything about it? Mm -mm. No. I'm not going to say anything about your dream? Oh, do you? And read? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 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 I basically described the, the gist of the dream. You know, and I, I did do mention I haven't been able to do anything in the in, in, in the uh, in the ruins. I'm a bit unnerved by it. A bit unnerved. A bit unnerved by by this whole yeah. uh, dreaming sequences, and I'm, I'm I'm concerned. But maybe we should go uh, quickly check them out. Uh, let's uh, do anything. Do the orcs have any cover? Cover. Like goods or anything? Oh, uh, they assume if you've given them their cloaks and they have their cloaks on them. Right. If you, but you like, are you gonna need them to ride across an open field to reach a dwarven excavation? It's not like they're going into a city, so yeah. it's, it's a lovely little orc lady and a couple of orc barbarians. What's the deal? All right. Um, Don't see, do we have any feed? We have like one, you have enough to, to get there. And back, yeah. yeah. All right. Like I said, though, because if you're waiting for Sork still, uh, you're not gonna be able to leave till close to noon, mm -hmm. and so you won't be getting there until like sunset. Yeah. So either you have to head back at night or stay the night there and head back in the morning mm -hmm. once you get there. Well, 
I say... And you don't really know what you're walking into. You might end up needing to stay overnight anyway, or you might be like, well, there's no point in staying here and head back. You can head back, it just if you head back, it'll, in the same day, it'll be coming back at dark. After dark. Um, let's check to make sure the orcs didn't drink all the, um, mead and spirits. We could assume that you stopped them from finishing off, like, the first barrel. You're a barrel and a half now. They drank half of your one of your barrels okay. of rot gut. Not too bad. Not yeah. too bad. A uh, barrel and a half? No, just half a barrel. Okay, that's not bad. You have you still have a barrel and a half of rot gut. Nice. All right, we um, saw the barrels, so we can always refill it. Yeah. Well, um, I say we leave the barrel, and I just get the empty glass bottle and just, like, shove it in there, fill it up, close it, put it back in my back. Little barrel with Sork if he's interested, and then we can take the half of half with us and be cool. No, okay. are you gonna? Let's like, assume that you like. You, We're just loading stuff up on the yeah, wagon. What are you gonna stuff. take? Again, yeah, decide. What, what are all you taking with you? Who all are you taking with you? All right. Are um, you taking Puyet with you to the excavation? I'm taking the two barbarians. We're taking Puyet. You're taking the two orcs. You mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm, two orcs. Okay. Are you taking Puyet. Taking myself and him. Yep. And all the equipment I got. And that's okay. it. And then whatever you want in the wagon. Let's see, and the wagon, shovel, iron pot, two hand axe, mm -hmm. shackle. The hand axes, man. So what, what is the name of these orcs? Um, Lubash and Morg. Lubash and Morg. So and yeah, Lubash, Morg, and So, Kriot. which one of them is now using the shark tooth longsword and giant crab shield? The one with the javelin? Yeah, I don't remember y'all establishing which one you're gonna give the sword to. If you were actually giving the sword and shield to, sword to anyone, who has the most uh, strength? They're both identical. Okay, so just give it to one. One has an axe, one has a javelin. I guess the one with the javelin would be a bit more handy with the sword. Hmm. Yeah. So let's just give him the uh, sharp tooth long sword and mm -hmm. keep the. Or you just let them have their own weapons and you just keep that stuff as evidence and not bring yeah. it along all the time. All right. Uh, so I want to just leave that at the manor. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. All right, and all that. Whatever's useful. And what do you want? You still have paid Ruby, so like she's no longer having to guard Sork. So what are you gonna? Is she just gonna keep an eye on the manor while they're working on it? Yeah, I can ask her to just like throw the rocks back into a little pile. Yeah, let her know that people can visit. You know, if she wants company. If she wants, you know, people to stay. And well, there's well. plenty of rooms, plenty of things to do. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure she has a house and everything. But just be neighborly, you know. Yeah. Um. And I think we put all three of the tents in the uh, wagon, so that's good for just six case. people. Yeah. yeah. And I say we just get all of our bed rolls and also just keep that in the wagon. So I always have a bed roll on me. Yeah, but like, so it's not just like piled up there. We can just like keep it on the wagon, so that it doesn't good. look as yeah. bad. Just assume I have it with me at all times. Yeah, it's always on the wagon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's it. Let's. Uh, all right. So you head Just off around noonish. Yeah, mm -hmm. past time, wait for Sork. Okay, is. which he wraps up and he hands you a completed transcript in Gnomish, but the notebook is now completed. Alright. Like, this is what you wanted, you still can't read it, so whatever. But now I have it. You crook. So to what to now? Where are we going now? What's the plan? Uh, we're gonna go jump down back to those uh, dwarven excavation ruins. See if we can get my bowl back. Yeah, okay, I never got to go there with y'all. That was before you met me. Mm. Yeah, you're gonna love it. All right. Well, um, let's see. Bullets. Are and you I... still gonna have him ride in the separate cart? Or are you gonna take both? No. Uh, so yeah, we're uh, taking both horses. So it's here. Let me use visual representation. Is Leonardo on the cart? Uh, Leonardo. Is on the cart, yes. And then Chester pulls the wagon? Yep. Okay. And who's going to be driving the cart then? And who's going to be driving the wagon? Uh, I'll be driving the cart. Uh, he'll be driving the wagon. The cart is going to be behind the wagon. Okay. I don't know where my papers are. Uh, we all can zip down there. There's like no encounters over the open fields because it's like open space and not like a bunch of monsters. I mean, there's just grasslands and a few farms here and there. So unless you want to actively try to stop and seek out game, that would just increase the amount of time it takes to get to where you're going. I want a quick question with Puyet through translation. Mm hmm So she more of a bow kinda of lady or a crossbow kinda of lady? 
Uh, no, none of the above kind of lady. She's had very little in the way of weapon training. Mm. Would she like to have one of, uh, well, I'm assuming I will find my bow when we get to back. If she wants me to show her how, we could go hunting with the bow. Uh, she, she might like that. that. All right. You can ask her. See what she thinks. She's my wife. Mm -hmm. I can't even talk with her. You can say you're, like, talking to, uh, her brother, and he's like, Yeah, man, she'd probably really dig that. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> he, talks, he talks like a, like a frat boy. A frat boy orc brother-in-law. Yeah, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah, bro. Yeah, that's the mm -hmm. thing about your orcs. Is not just your honor guard. They're your brothers-in-law. Okay. <laughs> and they're all buddy-buddy. All, all buddy. Where did my stuff go? I don't know. Oh, it's under here. I was waiting, because with that... Okay, let me dig out. The carts. The carts, baby. I'm gonna just set on that. I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't. I do not. Oh, here it is. Okay, well, as you're approaching the canyon, uh, you hear a strange bird whistle, but one of uh, the orcs, Lou Bash, Answers it with the, like he puts his fingers in his mouth around his tusks and also answers back with a, what sounds like a strange loud bird whistle, and then uh, like up on the two like cliff faces at the top of the entrance to the box canyon, you see like a, a figure stand up and like wave at y'all. Mm. And Lubesh is like, "It's fine, our people are here." Ooh, all right, very good. Um, oh, he's so as you enter into the box canyon, uh, there's a small group of uh, female orcs. It's like you guys are coming up here, like up on like the cliffs. You see like the orcs that waved past the gates. There's like a little cluster of orcish females with a couple of male guards back mm -hmm. here around some of the ruins. Uh, there's a big long uh, tree that looks like it ripped out of the ground, just kind of lying loosely on the steps. The doors have been pushed open. There's an etten. A female Etten and a couple other uh, orc females who all turn to look at y'all as you come in with your little procession. I, I, I stand and I, and I brandish my axe and I, and I, and I lift it up as, as we go and I'm like, Hail! Okay. I just do that. Like, I like just high, you know? But in a very heroic way. Uh, um, the, yeah. the, what looks to be the leading female who's got like tattoos on her face and she's tall and she's like dressed the most impressively and she's got these really long lacquered fe uh, fingernails walks up and if she looks you up and down notices the gnome is like oh you must be the orc executioner mm. lubash puyet what are you doing here puyet she's my wife i can't speak with her very well but we we love each other very much so what when did this happen mm. a few nights ago <laughs> apparently i am now part of your family she uh, converses with some of your orcs and orcish, and then Puyat, and they have a little discussion. And it's like, okay, well, if you're part of the tribe, I guess you're part of the tribe. I, I show my, I, I, I also brandish my to token of grumsh. We just uh, penetrated this place. It had been held from us. We were trying to turn it into a uh, base of operations. Two. So, the Claw Luthic is there at the door. Cool. She's surrounded by, like, some other female orcs. There's the big Etten. She's communicated with your orcs to get an idea of what the hell's going on. But she doesn't quite know why y'all are here. Um, she just said that they had just gotten into this, uh... Just broken This in. facility the last evening. I go up to the uh, the female at what's her name Luthic. No, she's just the claw of Luthic. She's only known by her title. She doesn't have no, a she's name not anymore. The, uh, she's not the leader. If no, Puyet became the... the claw of Luthic, Puyet's name would be Claw of Luthic because then she would just be her her official role. Hmm. Claw Luthic is probably leader, but she's not hmm. the Etten, I don't believe. I no. Say. But yes, the Claw of Luthic is the one in charge of this group of orcs. I heard Hartman had a dream of this 
place and he seems to have constant nightmares. Any night I'm up yes. after him, I see him rolling and sweating in his sleep. I've been dreaming of this place. I actually dreamt of some of the things you people have been up to here. And I'm curious. I'm wondering what kind of tie I have to this place and why I keep dreaming of it. <clears throat> I can't tell you. Mm. It's between you and the gods have you been drawn here. You think so? What do you mean you've been uh, having visions of what we've been doing? We've just been trying to get in here and these two dwarves wouldn't let us in. What did you do with them? One of them got shot because he tried to attack us when we first arrived. Yes, he did? Uh, he's, yes. And the other? We have him tied up in there. He's not been very agreeable. We've been trying to get him to tell us more about this place and to uh. open up the rear sections. Uh, let me go talk to him real quick, please. All right, I'll come with you. All right, well, I'll come with you too. So Claude Luthic and her little attendants lead you in. The Edden stays outside, obviously, and the, the little gaggle of females that have all been just kind of watching this from a distance. You notice there's no younglings with them at all. Um, uh, so you go head into the dwarf ruins. She takes you into the main temple area. By the door, it, dead as you go in, you do see the body of one of the two dwarves you met, Dazlin. That's unfortunate. Can I roll a perception check? If you want. For what? I want to see a couple things. Wounds, type of wounds, and... He's been shot with an arrow. And... Orc arrow. Just like Orcs in your dream. To get in. And he's been, been, anything unusual about the carcass? No, that he died by okay. an orc. He died by an orc. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, sure. He is dead. All right. So Norbis is still alive then. Yeah, I mean, he's tied up, and actually he's he is like you have him tied to one of the pillars uh, in the room, in the center of the room. All right. Um, I want to go up to him. I use my uh, moonshade dagger and I cut him loose, and I'm just, like trying to tell him like it's okay. So sorry, this had to happen. Like, you guys, oh my god. Who was it? Wait, which, which Did one's you the manage one? to fight your Norbis. way past the... And he sees that Luthic and the other orcs are with you. What's going on? Don't worry. We, I have, we have connections with them. We've made deals now. with them, and they're, they're on our side as long as we you keep behave. we keep doing the way we do. Mm -hmm. um, if, have y'all seen any more jellies or anything else in this? No, we'd, we'd, we'd managed to uncover a couple secret doors after you left, and uh, we're like just starting to like poke around at this passage in back that the ceiling had collapsed in, so it had to be cleared out if anyone's ever going to get to whatever lies beyond the passage. All right, uh, and I then the orcs showed up, and they shot Dazlin, and I pulled him in and closed the doors, and they've been pounding on it for days trying to get in here, and they finally did yesterday, and they want me to work for them, and I don't want to do that, and so they tied me up. Uh, and then now y'all are here. Can we get Puyat to heal him? Yes. In case he's like still in any pain or injury. Could you tell her to do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Puyat Puyat casts. Uh, just. As I say, he he needs to be in control of her tactically since they have the don't have a communication barrier. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, so she's gonna use the. Is she cure wounds? Does, does she stick by me? Is she? Does she? Or yeah. she's just like whatever with me. Use cure wounds. So now she's. That's kind of up to y'all. Y'all kind of decide how y'all are standing around and shit. Um, if you want her to be like over by you, yeah. It was just when it comes to tactical things in battle, he's the one that's got to be able to communicate. But with, like in personality, is she infatuated with me, or she's just there? It's hard to tell. Oh, okay. She's orcish. She seems shy in right. most situations publicly when you're talking and stuff, or being taken around in unfamiliar situations like this. She seems maybe a bit more relaxed, since that's there's a bunch of orcs here and stuff. Hmm. You, orc, that you can talk to. Hmm. Puyat, orc I can talk to. Me directly with Puyat and then sort of behind us. Alright, that sounds good. And, uh, I guess, let's see here. After he's healed, um, just get out of here, man. It's all good. We'll, we'll clear it out and finish excavating, and we'll let you know whenever the orcs leave. Uh, yeah. I have some stuff, I mean, if I'm gonna ditch, uh, I kind of would like to take with me that I've already gathered. Are they gonna let me out of here? Um, I'll tell them to let them out. And then I, 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 I go up to the, um... You threaten them as your executioner that if they try to meddle in any means with this dwarf again that they will have the wrath of Grumsh. You think I should do that? That is what the executioner is. 
All right. I, I wouldn't mind, you know, it's like getting dazzling buried. When are y'all leaving? I mean, y'all got, um, y'all just take them with you? We could yes, just take yeah. them with you. If you just want to stick with us, um, here, just hang with Sork. Is the claw, is the claw of Luthic there? Uh, we just want to quickly, like, yeah, check out Yeah, she came in ruins. with y'all. I talked to her and I tell her, this, this dwarf has been in my dreams. I feel like the gods and him have a tie together. Do not hurt him and let him, let them come with us. Uh, very well, Executioner, mm. if that's what you wish. All right. I want to quickly just check out these ruins for what we can. Let's see what we can find. All right. All right. Well, um, as I said, I think pretty much as I said, like, there's a collapsed tunnel here that he was mentioned. And like several secret entrances. Ooh, and I look and I look around here to see if my bow is anywhere to be seen. No, you don't see your bow. I don't see a bow anywhere in here. Nope. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate. Uh, well, you can ask uh, Norbis. I'm like, hey man, did you see a bow anytime yeah. you were in here? Yeah, it was over by the front door. Oh. When uh, all this, I just kind of lost track. Maybe one of the orcs picked it up. Oh well, it's mm -hmm. lost cause. I have yeah. my I have my crossbow. Oh, all along. It's all good. Um, can you show us how to get through a couple of little spots? We just want to check a couple spaces. Well, out. all the secret doors are open. Like So, mm -hmm. like, the entire complex is as exposed as possible. It's just like I said, there's one tunnel that's collapsed, and it will have to be physically cleared uh, to get into the last little area. Mm. Um, I think we could... Uh, she got me away. All right, but, like, what exactly are you looking for... And where I used to detect magic, and so I'm just like looking around for like any little magic thing, and it's like a. Well, see, I want to I want to go through here to a E8. Okay. Go all the way over. Yada yada yada. Go back to E9. Empty more. chambers, empty rooms, empty halls. It's E10. all dark. It's all dark. Uh, I use a torch. Okay. Yeah. Um. We look. Uh, we we asked the dwarf to uh, get us to the part that he was trying to excavate. That's gonna take days of of work clearing out the rubble. Yeah, Maybe sure. a bit less if more people are working on it. But I have no interest in doing any further excavations in here. I just want to get my stuff and get the hell out, right. and think hopefully I take my friend with me so we can have him buried. Away. Huh? Think if you use gust of wind in that small little tunnel and push it all out. Push what all out? Uh, the rubble that's collapsed on it. No, 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 that's, it's like the, it's, it's a, a mine, it's like a, yeah. it's, this is underground, the, the, the roof has collapsed. collapsed, it's completely chock full of stone. Alright, well, what about E6? I want to go back all the way around over there. Mm -hmm. To E6. Alright, I'm going to go check out that side, anything there? Like I said, it's all empty halls, all it's empty all been halls. a bunch of cleared out, he's already, like, whatever treasures have been found, he's got in a bag. Alright, yeah, um. Well, let's, uh... Make some perception rolls as you go along. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, make one for, like, the, the northern chambers. All right, so checking for E8. Six. Okay, obviously you find nothing on the northern side. The southern side, when you're looking around, around E6. E6. 19. 18. 18. Uh... Like, the rocks in the part of the room that are, uh... Like in the in the corner where the ceilings collapsed in E six, there's like some of them are kind of weirdly wet. Hmm. Hmm. I want to go up and try to just move a couple of the rocks. See if any of them. Like, see if like there's a little water stream behind them or something. No, thing. You pull a few loose, and they are kind of oddly like sticky, slimy, oh. wet. But it, there's just like it causes a little tumble of more rocks and dust, but. There doesn't seem to cause any like leaks to pop out or anything like mm. that. I'm gonna use flame sphere and just kind of push it on those rocks. Okay. You waste the spell slot doing that. Just a tiny little sphere. No, it's a. Uh, it's big. It's... Why not use a Why not use a tinder box? A little, little match. Because I'm trying to figure something out. You know what? Okay. Better yet, uh, can, I, can I just ask Sork to do a flame bolt, a fire bolt, and shoot? The, the, the yeah, rocks like, in the corner? Yeah, shoot out the rocks. He can, and he does. Nothing appears to happen. There's just a little poof and a little splash of little bits of stone and shit. Alright. I just want to test that. Alright, and... And I guess he can do a check around the back corner, but... Mm -hmm. uh, can we go all the way to, like, uh... Ooh, actually, if that's like that, can we go to E7 and check right there? 
like want to check around this little glob area because yeah. the stones were wet there. Yeah. I want to see if it's wet at the E7 area. 12. Plus you have a 4 wisdom. I got 3. Yeah. Yeah, there does seem to be a couple of spots where there's like kind of oddly like. Um, is that like, you know, a uh, cliff, like in a cave wall kind of moisture? Like it's yeah. just kind of beaded with sweat almost. And uh, check again at E10. Okay. 8, 11. Plus Not three. that you can tell. Not that you can tell. Alright, um, yeah. I guess let's just grab a Norbus, and pack everything up, and get out of there. Mm. Okay, what well, do you want to tell the orcs? Are you going to give them the uh, all clear to occupy this place? Or are you going to try to tell I'm them to go somewhere else? Or Tell them to go back up to Coneyberry. Like, if they want, they can track behind us and just, like, uh, pass next to Phandalin. Don't go through it, but, like, pass behind it and go up the hills all the way up to Coneyberry and the temple where the orcs are currently staying. And why, that... why, wouldn't, why couldn't they occupy this place? I just don't feel it safe. Plus, if that way we'd have all the orcs actually going to the Coneyberry ruins to where we were actually trying to build a city, having all the orcs and, like, their loved ones and all that in one spot compared to it being separated in two spots where who knows what might happen. Okay. okay. I'll go talk to the, to the claw. I go right. up to the claw and I say... You would basically repeat everything he just said. What I need out of you is a persuasion roll to see if you can talk her into it. I, I, here, actually, I, I say something different. I say, this temple... Is uh, they're very you've, been, you've certainly picked up they're very superstitious. I mean, the whole mm -hmm. reason they think you're the executioner is because they're very superstitious. Mm -hmm. So we've looked around this place. There are bad omens here. That's why I've been dreaming of it. I think you people should move on from this. There's no nothing but trouble. Here. Where are we to go with our our tribe divided and forced down out of our mountain village. We have no place for the breeding mothers to be safe and to raise the children. As it is, I had to send the Aya Grumpshoff with the little ones just in case this place turned out to be more dangerous than it was. That's where the little ones went. Mm. I'm rebuilding Coneyberry to make it a new city, even a hork, an orc haven, to, like, any, like, religious deity can have a place there. And if you have a place, you have a seat on a council that will help us negotiate terms and process, they would be safe there. Especially in numbers. I feel like splitting up these, these groups, stretching out, can be dangerous. Cole, Cole, uh, uh, Cole Neberry? Mm. Uh, Is that the, that ruined town near where the war chief has his men? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's not a bad location, I don't think. Well, if you're saying that the gods have put bad omens here and you've been sent to warn us away, it's hard. It's hard to argue against that. Okay, roll your perception. I mean, roll a persuasion check. With that excuse, be the 20. Okay. You're really good at persuading people randomly. <laughs> They're like, oh, yes, executioner. We don't want to offend the gods. <coughs> yeah, I, don't. I will... Tell the women to gather everything up, and we will make way back to the shrine. Uh, uh, we will stop and pick up our Aya Grumsh and our children on the way. Or should, do you think we should keep them separate until all things are secure? Bring them with you. Okay. Just, if you'll ever run into any kobolds, avoid them. Do not try to attack or harm them in any way. Uh, I've heard they stories of the uh, kobolds have... roaming these hills with a, a wizard sorcerer leading them. So yes, we would leave them alone. We don't like magic users generally. Thank you. Harder to fight. Conflict is definitely something nobody really needs in these times. Okay, so... Grab Norbus, put everything, uh, put all his stuff in the wagon with uh, Hartman and the other orcs. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm with Puyat. Yes, and you're with Puyat. Um, you and Puyat are sitting in the front. Mm -hmm. The other orcs and uh, Norbus are in the back. I'm sure he's horrified. I'm trying to talk with her, like I'm trying to like... Yeah, he's being forced like, surrounded by orcs in a cart. Okay, so... Yeah. And then it's you, and it's still, it's you and Sork yeah. still on the cart. Yeah, I'm just... And so you just gotta yeah, go I'm ahead back. and just push back and get back like around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're wheeling your carts out? The orcs are still getting their shit together. They're gonna leave in the morning, but you, like, do you tell them to stay out of the ruins entirely? Nice. Yeah. There's really nothing there. 
I don't think. Not not like the thing for them. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, that little dwarf dude's there with you in your cart, right? No, he's with the wagon. Okay, sick. Let's put him here. Okay. Talk to him too. As you he's moving off away the from the canyon, waving your last goodbye at the orc women up on the things. Mm. Farewells. No, not again. What? What? <laughs> what? Cryovane pulls another and eats your gnome again. Destroys the back of your cart. You mean to make an animal handling check? Uh, twenty. Do I see this happen? Yeah, no. You're the way he's got to set up your your carts in the lead. So you just hear this loud crashing sound and a roar and a screech of no. <laughs> ah! Sixteen. Plus. plus, you have the land vehicles proficiency. Yeah, so at two. Four okay, you managed to keep your horse from like panicking and throwing itself and doing any more damage, but the back end of the cart is smashed, oh, and you're, you're going to have to detach the horse from it, but the horse didn't bolt and panic off. You're like, whoa, uh, hold on. Uh, please don't run away. And the no. dragon of scones with your gnome. Dang. You're going to have to Right at that. sunset. Adios, sucker. What's in the cart? Nothing was in the cart. Yeah, sick, but now it's a wrecked cart. Uh, oh, yeah, but well, we got a horse. I leave the cart on the road and guess I'm riding the horse. Yeehaw. Or you can put the other horse on the wagon. Yeah. Be a two -team Hang out with horse. us. Help put a horse on a wagon. Help me get some of them romance boys on the road. Nah, fam. Get it yourself. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, car. Be my wingman. Norvis is like, what on the actual fuck just happened? He was planning to destroy the dragon and she didn't like that. What? What's been going on? I, I, a couple days ago, you show up and tell us to keep an eye out because there's a dragon around, and now, like, this dragon is eating gnomes off your carts, and you knew about this it? This is the second time. Why is it always the gnome, and why does our cart keep getting smashed? Those are expensive. They weren't too bad. I think it was a worthy compromise. At least now, you didn't now get we don't ate have by a giant dragon. My well, friend, I would I don't mind Sork, but damn. I, I, lost I don't you. believe Sork would have been too happy with the idea of us working with the dragon. He was especially trying to, you know, take down the dragon. I see. Therefore I made a deal with uh Cryovane to where she'll take Sork off our hands so I don't have to deal with him. What? <laughs> no, I miss it. <laughs> no I'm dangling out of her mouth. <laughs> Just like whoosh, whoosh, snip snap. Nah, you see her swallow him. Like a like a turkey. Good stuff. <laughs> and uh or pigeon. And gives you a subtle wink as she flies off. Ooh. And so uh, you're in good with the uh, you're in cahoots with <laughs> Yes, you know this, <laughs> dummy. I've told you this several times. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's gonna be late by the time you get back to Fandolin. Alright. Uh get back to Fandolin. Norbus, like, as soon as he's able to get away from y'all, he's like, okay, well, y'all have a good life, and I'm just gonna go to this inn, and I'm gonna set up arrangements to return to Gontelgrim as soon as I can, and he takes his treasure. Uh, uh, can I ask him real quick, if he's going to Gontelgrim, if he can give a word to, uh, the king of Gontelgrim that out, the Furbolg of uh, Neverwinter Forest is gonna be visiting him soon. If it's anything like your last visits, uh, I don't know if I want to give him that message. But yeah, sure, I'll, I'll pass that along. I, I'm not like a, I know the guy personally, but I can uh, like... It's in good intent, I promise. No, okay. If you need help burying your brother, let me know. Uh, I'll deal with that myself. All right. Thanks. Like I said, he doesn't want to be around orcs and orc friends right now since orcs mm. just killed his guy. All right. So, okay. Uh, My condolences. Head back up to the manor house and have another long rest. Yep. Yeah. Right. Hang on with the with, with the with the poo yet. And thus goes day eight. And so next step, morning of day nine. Hmm. Uh, I want to go and talk to uh, Elmar real quick. See if he has those uh, numbers ready for me. I want to go on a honeymoon hunting hunting excursion with my wife. We can do that when we go through Neverwinter Woods. Okay. It's gonna happen right after My we get Barry. And then whenever that's happening, I can talk to a couple people. You can just go out and have fun. I'm still working on the numbers. I'm gonna need at least like a thousand gold to get this started. Like I said, you're gonna. 
Right. There's like a lot of little things that are going to be built. There's like no infrastructure there. Well, I'm going to go talk to Haley and I'll let you know real quick. Okay. Go back down, talk to Haley. I'm like, Haley, uh, Elmer's giving me around about total for right now of getting started with roughly a thousand coin. I certainly haven't had enough time to hear back from any of my people. Uh, look, uh, tell tell Elmar I can go ahead and uh, advance him two hundred and fifty to get the ball rolling on stuff. But you're gonna until I can hear back from my superiors, I'm not gonna be able to release anything more of that. That's kind of coming out of my personal accounts. And uh, you're definitely gonna you're gonna want to talk and get a couple more people investing in this. If you're actually honestly trying to like rebuild a town, you're gonna need a investment. From people from well beyond just the level of uh, getting a harvest festival run, you're gonna need people who actually want to yeah. build there and reconstruct the city. Because I know. plan to talk to Lord Never Ember and a few other people from neighboring cities. Hmm. Well, uh, you want to make sure Never Ember's buttered up. Oh yeah, I have a plan. And from all I hear, like, he might still be a little cheesed at you about your little stunt at the hunting lodge a couple months ago, so we'll see how that goes. It might not hurt to go ahead and, like, resolve his issue with that mine and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure he'd like to still know he's, that you're not just yeah. taking over the area and he's not even going to get his gold out of here. Um, I mean, yeah, would you like to go to the mine real quick? We have the knowledge where it's at. Mm. Really quick? It's yeah. kind of on the way. All right, let's do that. And, uh... Lighthouse, maybe, if it's on the way? No, Lighthouse is all the way over here. Alright. Right. Like, oh, I see. Mine's over here. Line's drawn a different way. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, we, uh... Take it through the back roads. Buy some more feed from... Mm-hmm. Elmar real quick. Mm-hmm. Oh, go to Elmar, say, like, Hey, uh, Haley is gonna give us 250 to get the ball rolling on it, and... After that, we're going to start bringing in some more investors to get this real going. Okay. I got to connect. Alright. And so they're going to make some preparations to take off to head up to the mine, huh? Yes. Okay. Mine's tow. Let's see. So I need to buy feed. And... I guess I just used my last torch. Look, I got more in the wagon. Cause, okay, because, yeah, if you're about to head off to Coneyberry, and then from Coneyberry, where? That was, maybe you're going to try to cut up to the lodge and take the river? Yes. Then you don't even want to take the horses with you, then. Oh, yeah. All right, so we go on foot from Fandolin to uh, Mountain's Toe. Hmm. Mine. Okay, and you're going to take who with you? You don't longer have Sork. You no. sent off Donabella and Galandro. Uh, so you're going to leave, leave Ruby with the manor. You could take Ruby with you. Or you Ruby. just take Puyet and not have the experience oh, you earned so we, yeah. split up. Because we still got the two orcs. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the, uh, the, the orcs don't get any experience. Exactly. And assuming that they die, I mean, or orcs we, are pretty badass. They don't, they, don't, yeah. they, they, they we, understand. Like, like once we get to Coneyberry, we could always just leave the orcs if Puyet gets uh, high enough, like, yeah. hit points. Alright, and uh... Okay, so you're gonna leave with Puyet mm -hmm. yeah. and the orcs. Yes. Well, we and, but you're gonna have Ruby stay behind and yes. still guard the manor. Okay. Do you, do you want to bring the orcs? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. safer than leaving them in town. I see. Because then let's get bored and lazy. Yeah. yeah. Who knows what then else. Then they'll go chop some, up, chop some of the villagers up. Alright. Nice. Well, then when we pick back up in a couple of days, we'll see what happens when our intrepid heroes finally... Head to the Mountain Toes Gold Mine.